Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 123, where I'm looking at a 4-0 sealed deck pool that I used at the pre-releases. This is the pool. Please pause for a minute. Try to figure out what you would build out of this particular pool. I've got a few more screens coming up here where you can see uh, me zoom in on each of the different colors. I will come back to each of those screens a second time and talk about the cards there and which ones really stand out to me and which ones I did not care for. But we're going to zoom through those next few quickly here. There's the solid white cards. And the black cards. Green cards. Artifacts. Red. Blue, usually one of my favorite things to play. Feel free to go back, take a look at those, try to decide what you would do for a deck. The white's simply amazing. And it's not because I was using a white pack where the angel matters. The angel is one of the least impressive cards in the white. White has some really nice token generators, including Spirit Bond and Raise the Alarm. It has some removal, has some combat uh, tricks here with Sanctify of the Charge and a decent enchantment with Mark of Honor. The black here, I wanted the black to be good. Liliana the Best is a very solid card and in the right deck will win you games, but the black here is really, really weak. Stab Wound also was an amazing sealed card at one point in time, but Stab Wound does not equal the 6 or 8 damage that it often equals in other environments. I think that Stab Wound is actually weaker in this environment where most creatures just die to it than it is in other environments. The green here is missing the top end of the curve. I like green a lot in M15, but this green pool is nothing to be super excited about. Artifacts here, very happy with the artifacts overall. Rogue's Gloves, Juggernaut, Will Forged Golem, all decent cards. Tyrant's Machine, I don't know what they're thinking. Terrible card. Maybe it's just to help add skill to limit it. In red here, red is just really deep. There's red all the way from the 1 to the 6 casting cost that's playable. Very aggressive shell here. Blue is a little bit underwhelming. There's some wonderful flyers in blue in this set, and we got almost none of them. The Frost Lynx has some potential, but not in this deck. Mind Sculpt can occasionally even end games, but not in this deck. So here's what I built. A Boros Aggro deck. Very fast. Lots of small creatures. Little bit of large creatures at the top end of the curve and some removal at the top end of the curve. Try to put out as many creatures as you can, attack, win the game early. The curve is very low. One caster, only have one, which you're really only going to play in turn two. Your two casters are very, very heavy in this curve. Three casters are very strong also, and the four casters are just nice support to a quick early surge. The best cards in this deck for me were Spirit Bonds and Goblin Rabble Master. Both of these create a large number of tokens and can allow you to do a lot of damage early on. The Spirit Bond was the stronger of the two, although if you're ahead on the board, the Goblin Rabble Master can push you over the top. Although what's going to make you really strong at playing limited is not the rares, it's finding the uncommons and commons that are extremely good. My absolute favorite card in this deck for a common was the Borderline Marauder. A 3-2 for 2 casting cost, yes it's only a 3-2 while attacking, but it can also block when you need to block. Better than, uh, what was it, Gorklan, not Gorklan Rampager, the Chainwalker. Better than Gore Clan Chainwalker. Really nice card. I think this card is even cute playable. Constricting Stri Sliver is a nice top end of a curve, especially in an aggressive deck. Juggernaut used to be too powerful as a card. It is mediated a lot these days as 
creatures have gotten better, but it's still a powerful card. Devouring Light is real removal in this environment. Everybody's going to be attacking with their creatures, and it exiles them. Very, very strong card. And Rose Glove was probably my MVP for Uncommons. I drew so many cards off of Rogue's Gloves and Tokens or Flyers that it put me over the top in several games. One other thing about this deck is it's a very fast deck. But if you don't have the gas, you're not going to win. I mulliganed three games down to four cards in hand and were able to pull out all three of those games because kept a hand at four that had some two casters and I was able to get there. I would have lost those same games at a seven card hand with too much mana or the high end of the curve. Do not be afraid to mulligan aggressively in limited. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. They take one land hands at six hoping that they'll get there and they are stuck at one mana for the rest of the game. You have to have some spells that you can cast and you've got to have land, especially if you're playing an aggressive deck. Sideboarding was pretty easy. There wasn't a lot to sideboard. The card that came in most often for me was Oppressive Rays for Solemn Offering. There's a lot of really good artifacts and enchantments in this set, but some people weren't playing them. I probably should have had the Impressive Ray's main deck and the Solemn Offering sideboard, although it definitely blew out some of my opponents who were playing some of the more powerful enchantments main deck. People are really excited about Grand Prix Portland, which is a team sealed. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into M15 and the cards that are really playable. Uh, I may be making it down there, and if I do, I hope to see some people over at the Grand Prix who are fans of the channel. I also wanted to say thank you to Phoenix Comics and Games, who hosted this pre-release, very well-run pre-release. I also want to point out that Nick is looking for a Garruk's Axe. He is the owner of the store. I know he's not willing to pay anything insane for it. The prices are kind of over the top right now. Uh, but if you know somebody who would be willing to make a decent deal on one, uh, definitely either let me know or contact Nick over at Phoenix. It looks like a really cool item. I would love to see him be able to get a hold of one. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Thank you to all the individuals out there who sponsor the channel. It means a lot to me. We've got a lot more content coming in the next few days, including some M15 pack openings. I got some prize packs and I'm gonna be opening one for a patron of the channel and then the rest as part of a sealed pool to kind of walk through building a sealed deck.